All right, hey everyone, and welcome to the May Lee Show. This is a new experiment. Uh, first time we're trying to do this. And this is the whole idea of this podcast slash video, I should say, because we're shooting it, but really we're doing a podcast, is to talk about Asian American issues. You know, um, there are some outlets right now trying to do this, but, you know, I get a sense that they're not really tapping into issues and personalities that we should be talking about and kind of digging deeper. And so we decided, you know, let's do this. And so my name is May Lee. Like I said, obviously, that's the name of the show. Um, I'm a broadcast journalist who's been doing this for a really long time. And I've been all over the world. But my passion has always been Asian American issues. Um, if you're watching the video, you can see that there's a guy sitting right across from me. Benny. Hey, Benny. Hey, how's <laughs> How it going? How are you? Benny Luo. Now, some of you may know him uh, already. Um, actually, a lot of you may know who he is already because you probably are listener or readers and followers of his company, Next Shark, which you started back in twenty. Oh my God! Was it twenty thirteen? Yes, twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen, yeah. right? You know, right? It for, <laughs> more I know, than I, do I know. Now, at this point. now listen, because I do my research. Um, but Benny and I, okay, we met what maybe a year and a half ago or something. It was oh, at man. that. It was at that uh, function yes, down in Costa Mesa. Yeah, I think it was like a, a function. Yeah, some organization. So yeah. my our mutual friend told us that we needed to meet because we both were like minded people in the Asian American community trying to do some things in media, right? To talk about these things that we care about that we felt like weren't being covered properly. But with you, with Next Shark, you're obviously trying to cover these stories that affect us all. Right? Yeah, yeah, we try to focus on, you know, a uh, little bit more like serious topics, topics that I feel like get swept under the rug a little bit. Yeah. And, um, and you know, as from what I've seen with Asian America, I feel like a lot of us are, you know, fragmented and, you know, for a good reason. I mean, a lot of us came from, you know, different part, different generations yeah. um, from different parts of the world with different cultures. And right. so naturally it's there. Because we're not all the same. And that's what the mainstream always thinks. Like they try to clump us together as if we're all the same, same, similar backgrounds, but we're not. Monolithic is that word, I think. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you obviously you saw the need to kind of try to talk about all these issues that are different right with next shark yeah yeah exactly i mean you know we um I, i've been in the media business since uh, 2011 i mean i had a company prior to this called newmediarockstars.com and that was yeah. focused on covering uh, digital celebrities uh you know the rise of youtube and streaming platforms um growing up i mean i've always had like a passion for you know asian american issues i'm i mean like i think many young asian americans uh you know i went through a lot of bullying and racism i was growing. just yeah i was just gonna say i think that's where we all have that in common unfortunately yeah right? and everybody has a story right yeah if you go yeah. back to that i mean man i grew up in dayton ohio a long time ago and that was no fun um, at times because of the racism. Blatant. Was there even Asian people there at no, that time? No, 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 no. <laughs> that was one problem. But the other problem was that, you know, it was a long time ago and, and you know, it was all white. Um, and I might as well have had three heads because that's the way that people would look at me. And, I mean, look, we all have this story, right, of being called names, chink, jap, ching, chong, chong. What's all the worst story for you that, you that you think you remember? Oh, my God. That's do, how long do we have? <laughs> I mean, seriously. I know, right? you know, it's, that, like, yeah. it, it's sad to say, but, you know, I mean, I, and I know we talked about this many times that you also went through this in Northern California, mm -hmm. right? It's very diverse up there, too. Right. I still went through it, and it was weird. I mean, one of the instances was like, you know, I was in. I remember I was in middle school and I was just watching a movie in San Francisco with my friends and I walked by an old like I thought they looked like a nice elderly couple and I was as I was walking by them the gentleman yelled out you know fucking Chinaman oh and I'm wow like, wow I was really taken aback by that and right you know I'm I'm like maybe 12 years old at the time 12. 11 or 12 somewhere around there so yeah. it was very so it's gonna have a, a dramatic impact on a young person's you know psyche yeah yeah and you know makes us feel less than so okay so. Go, going now to the uh, current times or when you started Next Shark. So you obviously were affected by that background, you know, and you knew that you had this something in you to want to speak up, right, and give us a platform and talk about these issues that we care about. Yeah, right? absolutely. And the funny thing was, um, you know, I've always had a passion for it and, you know, I've always felt this need where it's like, hey, I don't want whatever happened to me, I don't want other people in the future to suffer through this. Right. But it wasn't, but I never really thought about building a business around it. And truth be told, Next Shark Star didn't start off as an Asian American site. We were focused on, it was initially focused on business and success for millennials. That's right. why Shark com comes from poker. I mean, poker shark uh, in a sense where, you know, it's, it, 
typically the best player at the table, the most aware at the table. Uh. And if you look at a lot of like um, successful entrepreneurs today, like Tony Shea, like Carl I can, you know, yeah. billionaire. Um, they, you know, they talk about how uh, you know poker has had like you know a positive effect on you right. know, how they view business and you know everything like that. And so I Char- cannot play poker to save my life. So what does that say about me? So <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. no, no, it's a, okay. It's a, yeah, that's good. No, I'm glad you're explaining that because I think a lot of people do wonder where that name comes from. Yeah, and so the next thing the next generation, the right. next thing. And so, you know, we did it for about two, uh, you know, about two and a half years. I mean, I started the company with $3,000 of my yeah. own money. We've never raised funding or anything, taken a loan or anything like that. And um, it was a natural progression. And we noticed two years in that our Asian-centric content was doing well. It was sort of covering more Asian uh, entrepreneurs, Asian faces, tech in Asia. And naturally just listening to readers and getting reader feedback, we just started expanding so more and more. So naturally going that direction. I mean, that tells you something, right? There was this hunger because there was a lack of that kind of platform providing that kind of information and focusing on these stories about Asian Americans, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, that that was that must have been really kind of telling for you. Like, wow. Okay. It's crazy, too, because, like, a lot of people are, you know, I feel like I get more than enough credit that I need for, you know, starting X Shark. But at the same time, like, I turn it around and be like, look, I mean, you know, I believed in it, but I didn't know I could turn this into like a business. And, right. you know, everybody asked me, hey, what was the secret to Next Shark's success? And it's honestly just very simple. I just listened, honestly. Right. I mean, right. we listened to our readers on what was important to them and looked at, you know, what issues weren't covered. And, you know, I took all the feedback very seriously and that's really what what is based off of so yeah if there's any credit i feel like the community deserves most of the credit for yeah. our take success. some of it benny take <laughs> some credit um, <laughs> now the reason why i'm uh talking to benny about neck shark and um these issues that we care about is because going back to the event that we met at about a year and a half ago we both were on the same page and so we have met a couple of times over the last year kind of casually talking about like man you know what should we do? Maybe there's something we can do together to take it to the next level, right? And that's when we finally were like, all right, let's do a podcast, right? About these things that we are always talking about anyway. And so there was the concept of the show was born. Um, it was Benny's idea to call it the May Lee Show. Just FYI, everyone, <laughs> it's not my ego. It's just you know he just thought, okay, why don't why don't we just keep it simple? You're gonna be the host. You're so low key, um, May. Sometimes I, you gotta, I, we gotta I, blow I you up I, a little bit more. Well, thank you, Benny. But still, but uh, but anyway, that's why it's called the May Lee Show. But um, you know, I, I wanted to do this first podcast because we wanted to talk about where we're coming from, right? Your background, my background is that. I've been a broadcast journalist for a long time. I'm not not even gonna say how long because it's been a long time, but I've worked for CNN, CNBC, Oprah. I've had my own talk show called The May Lee Show that I started in Singapore um, because I saw a need of having a platform for the Asian woman in Asia who was starting to rise up and becoming much more independent, much more outspoken, and yet there was no media platform and representation for them. So I always, I think I always was intrigued to create a new platform for these people who didn't have a voice, right? And that's what we're trying to do with this show. Uh, Hopefully we'll be successful, but I really think that the time is now. Yeah, I agree. We've talked about this, right? Yeah. The timing is, I think it's it's really right now we need to seize this opportunity because we see this movement happening. You mentioned the blips you're talking about too. Remember yeah, in, your in the past, you know, I've seen these blips of, you know, Asian American issues and you know personalities becoming a little bit popular, but then it fades, right? It's not it it's there's no lasting effect. This time around, it started a couple of years ago with Crazy Rich Asians, you know, things like that certainly helped. But I feel like this could be sustainable. That there's it, there's something different about this time around, and I think it's our community definitely saying we want more, and we're demanding more. Yeah. Right. I think in the past Asians have unfortunately stereotypically been a little bit more silent. We've accepted the fact that we're being marginalized and you know thrown to the side, and so we just kept our head down and you know did whatever we head needed down, to do. Head down, work hard. Exactly. That's mm-hmm. like, you know, the traditional Asian way, right? But there's something changing. I mean, you feel it. I mean, you're younger than me. You feel it within the younger generation too, right? Yeah, I mean, and, you know, you, you can speak on this probably better than I can, but, you know, uh, even even for my lifetime, I mean, I'm 31 now, is that 
I don't think I've really seen another time when I've, I've seen so much amplification, you know, mm. for Asian Americans. I mean, you know, we've been successful online with, you know, YouTube and, you know, online streaming. We've been, you know, we now see Andrew Yang in politics. Right. Uh, you know, we've made strides in the medical and STEM tech field for a while now and entertainment with, uh, you know, Fresh Off the Boat, Crazy Rich Asians, you know, so many. Yeah. And so I, I really, and I agree with you, I really feel like I, I, there, there's I, I there's a weird feeling that I get and it's a good one that I'm like hey like there, there seems to be a really interesting opportunity here now but we we, not, we may not know what exactly that is but I know that we have to start moving oh yeah for right. sure for sure I feel like um, you know uh, there's an organization a national organization that started recently um, and I was meeting with you know the person that we both know um, it in the initial stages. I remember having this conversation with her. I said, you know, look, this is a really good time to start something that is Asian based. And I said, because it's it's our time, right? It's our time. And so she took that and turned it into a hashtag <laughs> for the organization. But that's because I think it, it resonates with people within our community. It is our time. We've kind of been on the sidelines for too long. We've been considered the other for too long. We've been considered that silent minority for too long, the model minority for too long, you know? And so it's like, it's time to break out of that BS. Right, and just really take a stand. Amen, sister. <laughs> I know, right? Right, and creating that voice and that platform. Again, that's why this podcast is something that I think you and I have been so excited to try because, look, I've done my research and so have you, right? There aren't a lot of outlets right now, right? Mainstream media for sure still isn't focusing on our stories, right? And when they do, when they do, it's always like an outsider trying to do the story, right? Without the connection to the community or the culture, right? Yeah. The firsthand connection. Yeah. So there's gotta be a level of understanding before you can dive into a story. That doesn't mean like everybody has to be Asian, but still I think there's a level that you can't reach unless you've lived it yeah. and experienced it. Like what we, were, what we were saying earlier about the racism that we both yep. experience as kids, right? Unless you've gone through that, you kind of can't, you don't have an idea. Yeah, you don't really know until it really happens to you. Yeah. And you get, you feel that feeling and time kind of just like stops for a little bit and you're kind of like, wait, what, what just, what just kind of happened? What just happened, there? yeah. You know, and so I think that, I, I hope that uh, we can speak to that. I hope so too. So what, yeah. okay, so I'm going to ask you then, what do you hope to achieve through what we're doing here? I mean, what do you envision? You know, I, I think that it's the same vision as everything. I mean, a lot of people ask me all the time, say, hey, what do I want to do with Next Shark? I mean, you know, do you want to sell this company down the line for a bunch of money and make a bunch of money? And, you know, and don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I'm definitely like, you know, uh, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, you know, I, I am a part capitalist for sure. But at the same time, like I, I look at it, too, as it's what I do as more of like um, almost an act of service in a sense. Mm. I mean, you know, I, I've had a great career um you're if, 31 benny no, 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 I, <laughs> I mean I, I i'm very grateful for you know the people i met and everything and you know I, i'll tell you i mean this is probably the least amount of money that i've ever made for myself here but it's honestly been the most fulfilling and wow. you know been the most most fulfilling i mean i enjoy going to work all the time i enjoy the difference that we make i mean seriously i, I get dms to this day like private dms i mean i got a dm from like a middle schooler and, and he was like, hey, um, I was wondering, like, I, I, I read your, your articles and I think it's really cool and I get really inspired by it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Vietnamese American, like middle school student. And, you know, I'm reading all these stories about uh, all these like kids being helpful to their parents. And I want to be helpful. I want to help my family um, wow. make more money. Could I work with you? Could I work for you guys and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, my God, I don't think we can legally hire you yet. But please, like, you know, keep me updated and let me know, like, how you are. And, you know, if wow. there's... And so, you know, those are the things that keep me going. And honestly, for me, look, you know, I'm not going to lie. I mean, if, 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 if we grow it into a huge, huge monster and somebody wants to offer like a ridiculous amount of money for it, I'm definitely going to consider it. Yeah, but yeah, honestly, yeah. like, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for everything. I mean, I mean, I'm so grateful for the fact that we can employ, you know, Asian American writers and, you know, and, um, you know, and they can, you know, make a living off of this, writing about their own issues yeah. and um, things that they really care culture, about. Yeah, what they, what they grew up with and everything. And in the long term, look. You know, best case scenario is this turns into like you know a huge, huge company, or maybe it it gets acquired. But honestly, if you can inspire like 
current and new generation of people to like to to you know start something similar bigger and better than me that's all i can hope for yeah. you know if i can pave the way for that you know that that's 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 good enough for me yeah you know, i don't have to be wildly wildly successful with this and i think you and i share that same common thing you know i mean we we both have you know you have so much experience you know you have you know opportunity the opportunities for you are there you know there's so much so many things you could be doing with their time but the reason why we do what we do is because you know go back to it. it's our time you know who's gonna do it well yeah and here's the lesson everyone who's listening out there or watching um you know sometimes in life it's not about success in that conventional you know definition which you know conventional meaning making a lot of money and having a huge business and you know this having all this recognition and fame and all of that it's about making the difference right and i think you know, our society right now is starting to get in tune with the fact that we're losing sight of making a difference and it's all, you know, becoming very greedy and selfish. But we are starting to see people realize, wait, is that all there is to life, right? We, there's got to be more. And, you know, there's there's that, um, I don't know if you've ever seen this article written by a palliative care nurse. Um, and so this is somebody who takes care of people on in their final days, right? Wow. And she tracked what people were saying to her at the end of their lives. And not once did they ever say, "If I, oh, I wish I'd you know, worked harder or made more money you know, or had more things. They always say, I wish I had made more of a difference in my life and given back more and spent more time with friends and family. You know, so those are the things that you know, we should be focusing on, unfortunately. Yeah, again, in our society, it's, it's about success, 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 success. But if we can combine those two things, like we're trying to do yeah. here, right? Yeah, you know what's crazy? I think that you know one of the things I I, I think about death a lot. Um, do you? And not in the bad, not in a bad way. In oh. the last like two years, I've been thinking about death a lot. Really? Why? And um, I I think it's one of those things like it's a destination. Like Steve Jobs says, it's a destination that you know we we all reach, right? Yeah, yeah, and, inevitable. And sure. you know sometimes like um I, I I let a lot of little things get to me in my, in my life. You know I have a lot of you know anxiety issues and stuff, and I will let little problems get to me in my hmm. life and everything. And what has really helped me is just, you know, feeling grateful for everything that's around me. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like, I, I feel that, um, you know, that, that urgency to kind of make a difference. Like, when you know that you could die at any point in time, I mean, yeah. you don't know. I mean, like, all of us imagine, hey, hopefully we can die very peacefully at an old age and stuff. But the reality is we do not know. We never know. No guarantees. And so, you know, for me, you know, yeah, it would be great to make, you know, to, to be like wildly, wildly, wildly successful financially, whatever. But at the same time, like who, you know, how do you want to be remembered for? Like if you were to die today, like what do you want to be remembered What's for? What's your legacy? What's your legacy? Yeah. And so for me, like every day, like, yeah, as a, as a, as a CEO, as a founder, um, you know, I, I deal with a lot of stuff every day and there's always a problem to solve every day. And, but I, I, I make each day count. At the end of the day, I always ask myself, it's like, mm. hey, what am I grateful for today? Like did, 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 did I do you know, all the things that I wanted to do and was that, you know, as satisfied as possible. You right, know? right. And uh, and I, I practice gratitude pretty much every night. I, I ask myself, I have like a mental list in my head. What am I grateful for? You know, my fiance that I get to, you know, be, be next to her every night and wake up next to her. Yeah. You know, the fact that, you know, there was, um, you know, uh, you know, getting DMs from people saying that we've made a difference in, in, into their lives to, you know, people coming up to me, you know, on the street, if they do recognize me, yeah. and like, hey, like, uh, you know, you, your, your site has had me get through some of my tough times. Like, you know, I've been dealing with bullying in school or right, this in school right, or right. whatever. Or my friends don't get it. You know, they, they those are to... tangible differences that you're making in people's lives. Right. Yeah. And that's... that that's priceless. It's, it's like that. Visa commercial is it Visa or Mastercard that has oh, that yeah, commercial? Oh yeah, 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 for, yeah, Mastercard. I Mastercard think, I think is priceless, Mastercard. right? Yeah, no, yeah, you yeah. can't put a price on that. You can't put anything on that except for like, wow, this is what you're giving back to the world, and you're making a difference. Yeah, and that's how I feel with the work that I try to do as a journalist of telling stories and trying to speak truth and trying to you know dig deeper into somebody's story or issue that might make a difference in the world. Yeah, and again, right? like one thing I want to make very clear, yeah, like, you know, Next Shark is the largest online publication for Asian Americans, but I never want to come out and and be and act as if I'm the the voice of all Asian Americans. I'm not, you know. Yeah. I you know, yeah, I love like touching lives in a positive way whatsoever, but you know what I value more is if I can inspire like one or two people to do to to contribute themselves to to pay it forward. That's right. really what I'm looking towards. That's I don't right. care about oh my god, like the, you know, we're so great because we do no, this. No, it's no, not, that's not what this is it's, about. It's it's like crazy 
creating that ripple effect, yes. right? So you know, one pebble thrown into the into the lake can create a lot of ripples, and if it's positive, endless ripples, throughout. endless ripples, yeah. And yeah. so you know, I can't, dude, you're like like you're like an old man in a young person's body or something, aren't you? <laughs> no, I don't. Seriously, I don't. you're kind of like an old soul, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I guess maybe. <laughs> yeah, for well, I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think so. I think so. Well. Listen, Benny, I mean, I think we've said this over and over. We're both so excited about this project um, and working together on this and because we so believe in the mission of what we're trying to do here. And we came up with the mission statement. I'm going to read it, okay? I don't know if you remember, but the show will focus on the most impactful and relevant people who are making a real difference and contributing in their own unique way to the enhancement and elevation of the Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander. The show will strike a powerful, authentic, and intimate tone as well as pushing the envelope with challenging topics and issues that the mainstream media is too fearful to tackle. Yeah. That's amazing. I think I think those are mostly your words. No, I think that, you did a great job. No, like, we doing worked on that together, yeah. but, but I feel like that pr- pretty much captures what we're going to try to do here. I don't think I could have summed it up even more beautiful, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, listen, dude, I'm so excited, and I know you are too. So we're going to make this happen. And everybody, again, who's watching and listening, um, get excited because we're going to have some really cool voices on this program and talk about some sometimes some difficult issues, right, about our community and hopefully get the word out that, hey, we're here and we're here to stay and we're here to make a difference. I feel like we should high five after that. Dude! Oh. Woo! <laughs> All right. Well, I think that wraps it up for now. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I'm excited. Me too. Thanks, Benny. Of course. <laughs> All right. All right. That's the Maylee show for now. Join us next time.